All right, good morning, everyone. Welcome to TAM Lab number 16. Today we're excited to have Kevin Sowells joining us. He's going to be going through a deep dive of Site Recovery Manager, or SRM. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen here, and I'll hand it over to Kevin. Take it away, Kevin. All right, how's it going there, guys? Um, it's only a few of us, so feel free to jump in. Um, we can we, we it can go wherever wherever we want it to. Basically, it's just uh, it's it's no strict structure here. Um, just a little sharing. So um, in the previous two, um, the the first one uh, first one I did we we did a piece uh, for replication install, and that ended up taking a while. Just random, you know, as usual demos things went went. went Went a little ride. And the second one, we kind of wrapped up the vSphere replication install and installed Site Recovery Manager and um, got got right to the point that we configured our first protection group and kind of did a quick uh, test failover, but uh, but di didn't really get into Site Recovery Manager too much. So so that was the point of this one is to kind of just kind of play around with Site Recovery itself as far as the options in there, just to to, to be a lot more familiar with the interface and and what type of configurations we have uh, available to us. So just a quick uh, recap of what the lab is. Um, one thing I, I did previously, I, I, uh, also, I also changed. Previously I had it just everything was completely virtualized uh, or nested under my, my virtual environment. So there were some issues there for me as well from a performance standpoint. It felt like things just had a little, little unnecessary lag. So. I put everything back onto the root. These are my, I have two physical um, super micros with uh, about 128 gig each. And then I have an old, uh, uh, older PC that was my primary desktop PC that uh, was a white box that I built some years ago. And I just turned it to an ES6 IOS since it had all the RAM. Um, this guy is serving as my DR site. Um, you see, I have two V centers in uh, enhanced linked mode. Um, so one site is Houston, my Houston data center. And then you'll see the second site is my Dallas data center, which is where my DR host is serving, um, uh, servicing. And if we go over here to the, um, to the VMs and templates views, you'll see I built out the, uh, some test VMs for us, uh, this folder here, SRM lab. We've got some accounting VMs, development, um, marketing, sales. Uh, the, the development, if you'll see the icon looks a little different, that's because the, these VMs are being, um, are actually running in, on, the, on the DR site and they're um, being replicated back over to, to the Houston site. So these are, these are just what's called the placeholder VMs that kind of give you a visual representation that the VM is being, is being protected from another site. So if in, in you, so if your customer has a, a you know multiple different sites that they're failing over to one primary site, you'd see actual representations of all these VMs show up in your in your primary site, and this kind of helps helps keep you aware of what's running and and where it is. So one of the core components to um, SRM in vSphere replication is getting that replication going, getting a virtual machine from one location to another. Um, and here, if we go out to site recovery, in version 8.1, you'll see the interface has changed a lot um, where now it's more of a converged look. Previously before Vista Replication and Site Recovery Manager were you know, pretty much two separate entities. Physically, they still are from a software perspective, but the, you know, from the logical look of it, they're, they're starting to converge more into a, almost a single product. So here you see my two sites. Here's my Houston vCenter and here's my Dallas vCenter. And on both sites, it sees that I have vSphere Replication installed and I have site recovery installed. And the process of doing that, one, if, uh, from our previous labs, we saw that it is a completely separate process of pairing these two sites up. So even though we have them installed here, I, realistically, I could have this vSphere replication server talking to a completely different vCenter and this site recovery talking to another one that's, that's not here. Um, so this just kind of gives you that, that representation of what's paired where. All 
All right. So, hey, and let me know if the, the windows doesn't only look too small or, or, or if it's sized appropriately here. So, um, going in here to site recovery, you can, it, it kind of gives you a, a sort of a, a headline of, of what's going where. So, from a site recovery manager, it shows currently I have one protection group and one recovery plan. Um, Visa replication, it shows I have um, uh, eight replications going, leaving, Houston, leaving Houston and three of them that are going from Dallas to Houston. And those, are the, those, those three are those development VMs that I pointed to. So from here, I can just, I could actually just click on this eight and it will go show me what's being replicated. So here are the accounting, marketing, and sales VMs that I configured to start sending data across. And on these here, if you expand it out, it shows what all features that I turned on. So um, network compression, quiescing, uh, quiescing um, which quiescing requires the VMware tools be installed on the VM. The network compression I've disabled on, on mine mainly because it, it takes more cycles away from your CPU on both sides. So those are, you know, that's a, a key thing that you want to keep in, in, in mind. So if a site says, hey, you know, we've only got a, a 200 megabyte, you know, or, or a gigabyte pipe between our two sites and we're going to turn on the network compression, that plays a huge factor in how many VMs we're going to we're going to be uh, replicating across because that that plays a huge part also in your in your C overall CPU CPU on the physical host. Um, so we want to keep keep all of those things in mind. Here it shows the RPO is set for 24 hours, um, and in that case, just a, a reminder: the RPO is just once again how much how much data we're we're willing to lose. So in my case, I put 24 hours. So if a disaster struck Houston. Uh, the my oldest data, excuse me, the the last copy of my data is going to be about a day old, 24 hours. Then points in time. This is a feature where you, we can actually go through and specify. I want to keep multiple images, not just one. And and that's something we'll see after we go through and configure a replication. So one of the first things I want to do, um, actually, we're going to go through and actually kick off a the process of, of configuring replication on a VM. So, um, and there, there are two main ways that we can do it. So on the left here, I could go out to, let's see, we find a VM that's not being replicated. Actually, I think I left it in the, Yeah, okay, the VM I had that, that I was gonna to use to, to do the replication, I think I've already, I already left it. I forgot to power it back off. So, but, so if the VM wasn't being replicated, here's the process that we could do. We could right click on the virtual machine and if we go down to site recovery act, actions, configure replication, all it's gonna do is kick off, kick, uh, open up that other page for site recovery where it will take us almost back to the same location here. The difference here is that it takes us into the menu, the same menu that um, we can get to manually. And here, I'll show you now the manual process. So if we went out here to replication, and let's say anywhere in this menu, we have our options here. So you see site recovery, and this kind of gives you this, this headline here, and here are options, replications. Right now, these are everything that's being replicated. I can hit the plus sign to go add a new VM. So, um, the, and the key difference is now we have multiple types of replication and with our vSphere replication, it, allow, it gives us the individual uh, setup of VMs. So here I can go select that DNS server. All right, and by default, it pops up saying, hey, uh, it recognized that VM is part of my Houston vCenter, so it, it automatically selected my Dallas vCenter. And here, it, it basically auto assigned what vSphere replication management server. If, if by chance I had multiple of those servers, which you can have up to 10 per vCenter, I could have chosen a, a, you know, a, a different one if I wanted to kind of scale out into which v, which replication servers were gonna carry the load of replicating that VM. 
you have the choice of selecting what type of provisioning and here I can also select a data store. Here's that RPO where I can go specify as low as five minutes uh, and which that five minutes to, to, to select that option, it does require vSAN. If you were using like a, your own external storage array for you know, NetApp or some other provider, that five minutes uh, is, is very unlikely will, would be an option. It would is be more so on your storage array to kind of make that available. You, you can do it actually, um, certain storage arrays, you can do a fully synchronous replication, which would take you down to zero minute, which basically it means you, you would lose no data there. So in my case, I'll choose 24 hours. And that also means every 24 hours is when this it sends across that delta of the, the differences between the VM. Here I could choose to keep some, keep certain, uh, a certain number of instances per day for a certain number of days, or I can say, just keep one per day for the last five days. And here I can go, I can create automatically create a new protection group, or I can choose not to do that right now. So in my case, I just want to set up replication for it. And so now it's going to kick off that replication process. And if I went over here back into my data center and I selected this data store here for the uh, copy of it, we should see now here's that VM. It's created the folder and it started the initial copy. And once it's, it gets to a certain point, it'll also create that create a, that new entry for it to, to run, run show as being replicated across. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause this one here. So actually. All right. So if I go back to my home page here for for a site pair, here's where I once again get the visualization of, of exactly what all is configured here. Let me maximize site recovery. On the left here, in inside of site recovery are all our menu options. The first piece we got here is our replication servers. We got Houston, we got Dallas over here and our status shows connected. It shows how many replications are going on, on in each. Dallas right now is receiving nine replications. Houston is receiving three. If I had a storage array, here's where um, that storage array adapter, the SRA would, would show up. Basically, it's a Windows server that would have the uh, software from the third party provider, whether it's NetApp or IBM, whoever storage I'm using, it would show up here. And then, and basically, once I install the, the SRA software on each side and each data center, one window server per data center, when I clicked add here, it would, it would allow me to go select that array manager, plug in my credentials to my storage array, and then pair those two up in the same fashion that I paired up my vSphere replication servers. Network mappings. Um, What's important here is, are, are all of these mappings. These are what, are what tell SRM how we're going to handle our infrastructure. So in this first option here, the network mappings, I have a choice for automatically prepare or prepare it manually. Automatically means basically, hey, if, if I see the same network, all of the same VLANs on one side and as the other side, I can all do, I'll take out some of this work for you and I'll just automatically assume VLAN 24 on the, in Houston is equal to VLAN 24 in Dallas. In my case, I'll go to manual here. And here you can expand out and see all of your, your switches and your networks. So 
for me, VLAN three, which is already selected, I can what I've already paired that one up here. I'll pair up VLAN two for me, and over here I wanted to match to this VLAN two, so I'll click add those mappings, and now that's an option. If Site Recovery Manager sees a, a VM that's connected to VLAN two in Houston, it's going to automatically plug it to this network in Dallas. Here it's going to ask me about the reverse mappings. Do you want me to assume the exact same on, on, on in the opposite direction? Do you want VLAN 2 in Dallas to also go back to VLAN 2 in Houston? Or do you want to, do you have another, another little test network that you'd like to move it to before you move it back into production after, after a disaster? That, that's an option. Uh, so yes, in my case, I want to say I want to have a, that exact reverse mapping. And test networks. One of, the, one of the key features of SRM is the ability to create a test bubble. And that, and that allows you to basically run your DR plan without affecting production. And what that is, this, this test bubble is, all it's going to do is create a, um, create a isolated network on each host that doesn't have any physical NICs connected to it. You'll see a, a, a little virtual switch get created with a port group. And the VMs will, will on in Dallas will power on and connect to that isolated switch with no NICs connected. And the whole point is just for you to see that the VM gets powered up. Uh, now, it won't be able to talk to other VMs unless the VM is on that exact same host. Then they can talk to each other. But from a, fail, from a disaster recovery testing perspective for a lot of companies, that's exactly what they need. We want to be able to test that DR happens. Hey, our Dallas data center got all of our VMs powered up and running as expected, and here's how long it took. But at the exact same time, production was not affected. These IP addresses aren't, aren't we aren't getting duplicate IPs out on the network. We didn't have to do any downtime for, for the application. And that's what this is giving us here, an isolated network. Some of the environments I've been in, they've created a whole VLAN dedicated for DR testing. In that case here, uh, I could go out in, in Dallas and say, hey, here's that new test VLAN that my network team created that they want all of my, you know, when we do DR testing, they want the VMs to power up because we want to actually be able to communicate to them, but not affect production. So our test users, uh, or, you know, our, for our acceptance testing would actually join that network. And now we would simulate what live production would be and still not affect um, our primary site. All right, and we're finished here. And folder mappings, this is pretty basic here. Um, it's just more that, that the logical administration of just mapping out where your folders are gonna sit. So in my case, my SRM lab folder is gonna match up over here to SRM lab. And that, that is already mapped out, I believe so. Yeah, I've already created that mapping, so. Same thing for resource. In, in some situations, you have a, a, you know, it could be two active data centers. Um, for, you know, Houston and Dallas could both be active with production workloads, but we have some old hardware that we're using as a standby in Dallas. So here's our here's our opportunity to go specify that older cluster of, you know, some some Dell R10s that we, you know, that we weren't going to use for anything else, we'll make them our, our failover. So we can go specify just that cluster to handle the resources. And then as usual, you can also do the same for reverse mappings. Storage policy mappings would, would go into effect if we had an external storage array. So for instance, if the store, if, um, if, if we did have, let's say, once again, I go back to NetApp is this my most common one. Um, if, we, if we did have a NetApp storage array and all of the APIs from that NetApp were exposed, you know, using our uh, VAI, we could create basically tags and storage policies and with those and associate those, associate those with a storage policy. So for instance, when you create a new VM, and you know how you can choose different storage policies. You can select a storage policy that would automatically make this VM be, pro be pro protected by SRM. And then our placeholder data stores. 
So the, the way I was showing you that a that visual visual representation of a VM being protected showed up in in the other data store and the other data center, that VM has to sit somewhere. That uh, is basically just a VMX file, and I want to say maybe a log file. So it's really small, but typically we would create a new data store that says, here's where all of my placeholders are going to be. These are where those small shadow VMs that just kind of give me an idea of what VM is being protected. So typically I'd have a customer just build like a five gig data store or something on each side, you know, with the name placeholder configured. And, and, and they would use that. Basically, we would here, come in here and map that out. Now, in my case, so I chose to keep my same production data store. So I'm using vSAN, my vSAN data store. And, and in a lot of situations, now that there's going to be a lot of customers only have that one single data store, this still is still an option. And what's going to happen, we'll see during our failover process, is that that one VM is, is going to have, a, if we go to the data store, you'll see a copy the same VM name with a copy and then a, maybe a 01 or, or a dash 01 on the end of it to represent that this is a second folder with just the shadow data store. All right, and then I won't go into, and these are just some features that just show any, all of your previous testing, as well as it uh, shows all of your data that's being transfer, transferred between replications there. So very intuitive. They give you a lot of good information. Your RPO violation count. So if, if, you, if you set a VM for a five-minute RPO, RPO and that VM is, you know, 250 gig in size and your, your, WAN, ban, your WAN link between two sites is, is, is a one gig link, it's a good chance that that RPO is going to be violated if, if, your, if your link is uh, saturated with other data, which realistically you're going to have more than just this type of data going across. And here's where you can kind of get a visual re representation of hey, what VMs are not meeting the deadline. So if I did have a disaster, I know realistically, even though I said five minutes, this VM more than likely is about an hour or two hours old. All right, and so here's back to that same screen for replications. Now we'll go over to the uh, first core component of it is prior protection groups. Um, the protection group is basically how we how we categorize the VMs together that will get failed over. Sometimes that's, that could be via an application uh, or one whole customer, um, just however you, how, however you logically want to keep these VMs together. So in my case, real quick, let's go back to the VMs. So I have three, three types of applications. I have accounting, marketing, and sales. And, and within each one, they're all three tiered. Um, one of the options I could say, oh, let me just put all of the sales VMs together, fail those over together. Then I could have all of the marketing, then I could have all of the accounting. One thing to keep in mind though, that VMs can only, only be a part of one single protection group, but they can be a part of multiple recovery plans. And the recovery plan is what we actually activate to say, okay, I want to fail this VM over. So I can create one recovery plan that encompasses all three of these applications but I can protect only three, you know, only the one individual group together. So let's go create a protection group for, let's say, our marketing. And direction is going Houston to Dallas. And let's go to the next. If I was using uh, an external storage array here, it would show all of the LUNs that are being replicated by that storage array. In my case, uh, I'm doing vSphere replication, so I'll select individual VMs. If I was using uh, the storage policy-based protection, that would show here as well. So here I can go select my marketing guys. And we're recovery plan is saying I can add to an existing or add to a new. I don't have a recovery plan yet, so I'll create a new one. Marketing recovery plan. All right, and it finished there. All right, so now if I go to my marketing protection group, 
show my virtual machines here that are being protected. My status is okay. Now I can also go look at the recovery plan that was created, my marketing recovery plan. Here are the virtual machines. Right now they're all status is ready for recovery. Let's go look at some of the options. If I go to recovery steps, uh, so actually, give me a quick second here. Let me go to, if I go to virtual machines, here I have an option to create, uh, to, to, I have a few more options. So you see when I selected configure recovery, I have an option, then it says priority group and startup action. Uh, configure recovery is going to give me a menu saying, oh, here, here, what type of, here's how I want the VM to look when it gets powered on. There is a, um, we have multiple priority groups, up to five. We have five priority groups that we can do. And basically that means, so if I have marketing sales and uh, accounting, I can say, hey, I need, say, I need sales or accounting to be my highest priority, priority group. And, and these, excuse me, I take that back, exist within the priority group. So within this priority group, I can have, okay, my marketing VM is in the, the highest excuse me, the, the database VM is highest and then down. I can also say I, I want to create VM dependencies. And a dependency is simply saying I want one VM, I, I need the application VM to be dependent upon the database VM and a web server dependent upon the application. So that ensures that one won't be up before the other. So the database VM will power up, then my application VM will power up and start looking for that database. And that way I won't have a whole bunch of errors uh, all in the application because the database wasn't ready yet. Then here, here you can choose your actions of when the VM gets shut down and, and how, much, how much time out we're gonna have. So um, in our case for, for a shutdown, we, 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 could all, we could just say, hey, just power it off. Don't worry about going through a graceful shutdown if the, if the primary site is still available and you have that option. And your startup action. Checking this box is, is one thing that I had a lot of customers always have an issue is that by, this box is checked by default. Wait for VMware tools. Um, one thing we all know is with Windows and VMware tools, you're going to come across a lot of issues sometimes, but sometimes that, that heartbeat just doesn't come across. And when you have, when you have this checkbox wait, uh, selected here, this VM will sit and wait, which means five minutes is a long time when you're waiting on one. So if you're waiting on 10, you, it's a long time of waiting that this recovery plan hasn't taken off and these VMs aren't up all because we're waiting on VMware tools. So that's something we just wanna make sure that the VM is, is good, make sure the tools are up to date, as well as make sure we don't have any issues that prevent that service from starting cons uh, consistently and uh, reliably. And pre-power on steps. Here's one thing. It, it, it gives you the options here that we can run a, a command, whether it's a script, a, a batch file, or any type of executable on the SRM server that can, that can kick off an action. We can also just put in simple prompts. Stop here. And all operations. Oh, and it's going to force me to say something here. And so now you'll see this option is here that we can, then we can have another, another step for after the VM is, is fully powered on. All right. So let's go to this marketing recovery plan. And so one of the first things we'll do is just to show what the test looks like. Um, so here I have the choice, I could run it or I can test it. And as I said before, the test is gonna create that logical switch over on my, on my DR host um, that just is not connected to any physical disk. Here I have the choice of, hey, go on, do one more replication before you start this and make sure I've got the latest and greatest. Number of VMs, that's all three of my marketing VMs here. Then I can hit finish there. And I always go to this recovery steps process and it kind of gives you a quick outline of what's happening. 
right now is creating writable storage. And here, let's jump over to my host. So you'll see these are my marketing VMs. Uh, let's see, these guys should be getting powered off at any point in time right now. Actually, I'll take it back. I did test, so it's not going to power these guys up. So that's great. You, you see these, these three VMs are still powered up. IP address is still there. However, if I go down to this host, go to my virtual switch, I, I should see a new port group. I actually created a, uh, its own switch and port group. Here's the SRM port group. I have three virtual machines connected. And now I just gotta wait for these, these VMs to get powered on. Let's go back to site recovery. Right now. Oh, look, so right here, it actually is waiting on me. So you see, I remember I put in that prompt, stop here and call operations, and it says waiting for user input. It's waiting for me to actually take that action. So look, now I have the option to, so if I would have put in a more descriptive uh, contents here, it would have gave me exactly what I needed to continue my DR testing. So since I, let's say I've done, I've called operations and I've done all of the steps they need, now I can dismiss this message. And now the process is gonna continue. It should move on to power up the rest of those VMs. Well, right now it's waiting for VMware tools. Hopefully VMware tools responds on that VM and doesn't take, all, take that whole five minutes. Kevin, is this a good place for a question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a customer recently that when the VM tool is on a Linux box, um, they had old open source tools and when they upgraded it, it didn't delete the old files so it couldn't re-IP the machines on the other side mm -hmm. because the old, um, the old SM, um, the old version of the tools files didn't delete all the files. So, you, have you ran into that before where you have to run a script to clean out the directory and then reinstall the tools? Yeah. Um, Linux VMs and, and for VMware tools, to be honest, you know, I, I, I've had just as much issues with Windows VMs and, and, and the tools. Now, the, the, the Windows VMs tools are a lot easier to install and, and they clean up a lot better during upgrade. But uh, the, the Linux, yeah, I've, I've had a number of customers that constantly have in their mind, the whole SRM product is failing, and it really comes down to just that VM that, you know, the, those directories, as you said, weren't being cleaned up. Um, however, on the flip side of that, the Linux VMs seem to, when it comes to the powering up, though, uh, they seem almost, almost more consistent. So, for instance, even like right now with my testing, I had, I had a number of Windows VMs that I was going to use also in addition. Right now, I'm using just the CentOS. The Windows, nine times out of 10, I would sit there waiting just for VMware tools to kick off or sometime I'd have to open a, a console window and then the, the tool, the heartbeat would come and then IP address populate and in turn the VMs move on. Whereas these CentOS or my Linux VMs is flawless every time. Okay, good. Good to know it wasn't just my guy. No, it's, it's uh, unfortunately just the, these OSs uh, and like I said, but, the Windows is the worst to me. If I'm being honest, Windows is a lot worse. So right Sorry. now it says it's waiting on tools. But if we hear, go look. So right now we'll see marketing is online, database, web. And if I go out to the host 
and go back to that new switch that got created, we see all our VMs powered up and connected to that, to that switch. Um, there we go, Which, what was I looking for? All right, so this test uh, shows it's completed. And one of, the, one of the other key things from SRM that, that we get that some of the other vendors who aren't as good at was the, uh, the history and the audit trail. So for instance, this audit, this can be exported. And these details are what a lot of departments would use to, to, to validate their status in terms of, you know, where we stand from a DR perspective. You know, we have exact times on how long it took to get certain VMs powered on. Yeah, I mean, pretty much all the details that you want to be able to hand off to your, to your director and say, hey, we are prepared for a disaster. This is, this is where this really comes in handy. As well as any issues that we had to be aware of. I don't know what that warning is. And test shows complete. So from here, because, because we only did a test and we created that virtual switch, our, next, our only option here is to clean up that recovery plan. So we'll, by doing that here, let me move this window. There we go. Yeah, and here it just tells you if you have any issues during cleanup, which sometimes the, it does happen where that, that switch that got created on one of the hosts for whatever unknown reason, let's say the switch didn't clean itself back off or, or a, a LUN that got marked as read-write and presented to the, uh, to the host on the DR site didn't disconnect. We have this option here called force cleanup. This force cleanup will only show up after we've done, done it one time. So right now, if I do cleanup and, and there's still some random things connected, SRM will pick up on that. And, we, and it'll still give us that run option again, and we can check that box where it'll do a, a hard disconnect of everything that was there. And so now if we go back to over to my DR hosts, we'll see marketing VMs just got powered down and this switch here should disappear any, any second here. And there it is, that, that virtual switch is now gone. All right. So one of the other things that we're gonna do, let's, I'm gonna go in through, um, we'll create protection groups for the others. Um, so uh, accounting, I thought I had three accounting. That's not. Okay. And and then sales. All right, so we've got we've got our multiple protection groups, as well as here we're not configured. We need to go, as well as our multiple recovery plans. So just doing a little investigation. So if I clicked on accounting, I see it not configured somewhere. So I'll go to virtual machines here. Okay, so I don't know what he's talking about. 
two of them, one configured, one not configured. Maybe I mean, maybe I didn't replicate something. Um, for replications, I got accounting database, accounting web, and the status shows okay. Same thing showing for sales. So let's just go do this. Let's go. We're, let's go do a live failover. Um, I'm going to go to the, my sales recovery plan. Right now it says ready for recovery. I have three VMs ready. So I'll, here, let me do a dual side window. So I can choose to run this recovery plan. And, and so here are my three sales VMs powered on and running. And the main thing it gives us here is saying, hey, I understand that I am permanently failing over. The recovery type uh, is, uh, so I have plan selected, but, and the other option is disaster recovery. The main difference between the two is that plan that says, I want you to go out and try to, to get me another replication of the most recent amount of data. Um, so the, the most recent version of that VM, which basically would mean no loss, right? And the other, uh, the, these, but however, if you go out and you try to get that last copy of data and you come across errors, I want to stop this whole process. And that's what plan migration would do. If it encounters errors trying to replicate, it's going to stop and say, hey, something didn't go right. If I choose disaster recovery, it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to go try to replicate. However, if it encounters errors, it's going to keep going. It's just going to, it's going to assume that site is no longer there and that's the reason I'm getting the errors. Plan migration says, hey, they're expecting Houston to still be intact, and it's not, so we need to investigate. All right, and I'll hit finish on that. So here, if I go to recovery steps, I can see what's happening. Um, where it should be shutting down the VMs. And here you see my sales app just shut down. My sales database should be going down soon also. All right, those three are down. So now if I go out here to these pretty, Shadow VMs that were in place, they're now getting powered on. And they're getting con connected to a network based on what I told it when I did the network mappings. So previously saw a message that there was no network connected. Now you see, okay, hey, I do see a network. And, and once it gets powered up, we should see an IP address populate. It's a good idea to always be watching your SRM interface just in case there's some errors or something's waiting on you. Right now, it's just in the status of powering on sales data. So all three are being powered on. Also, something to keep always keep in, in mind is based on the resources on that host, you know, these VMs are all, you know, just like in, in any type of virtualization, when all three are being powered on together, um, they're all basically doing that big, big request for CPU cycles. In my case, I, I've got more than enough to handle these VMs, but in, in a lot of situations, depending on how many VMs you're powering on at one time, that's something to keep in mind that these VMs are gonna, your, your host is gonna see a big, big influx of a CPU spikes because all these VMs are trying to get powered on together at the same time. All right, it says everybody's powered up. And if I look over here, I do have IP addresses. So the VMs are now powered up. So now that we're powered up over at our Dallas 
our Dallas data center. Um, the disaster has passed at Houston. The flood that we had is now cleared out. Our data, our Houston data center is back online. Our next steps are to do what's called a reprotect. And that reprotect basically means, well, it doesn't mean that we're gonna send all of EMs back over to Houston. All it means is we're, we're gonna now mark Dallas as our production site, which is so all of the VMs are are going to stay active, stay running where they are. Right now they're running in Dallas. They're going to stay stay powered on and running. But we want to protect ourselves again, which means we're going to reverse the replication. We're going to send a copy of these VMs back over to Houston now. And so if I go out here to this option, which I have no clue why they couldn't just fit it out here. I don't know, but these three dots here. And you see the option called reprotect. And here it gives us that same warning. And it's just basically telling you, hey, look, we're going to clean up some data stores and devices over in Houston. We're going to make sure that 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 we can see uh, see the your placeholder data store and we're going to start replicating out. All right. And I'll hit finish on that. And now the reprotect process is going. And here's what it's doing. I'm figuring vSphere replication. So if I go out to replications over here, now if I go to reverse replications, and that forward and reverse is based on what data center is primary. Up here, Houston, which is 001, is primary. So forward is, is anything leaving Houston going to Dallas. For me, here going leaving Dallas is now Actually, we should see sales, and we do. And we see these, they're in there under the initial sync. And it kept my same RPO configuration that I selected as far as for 24 hours. All of those it kept, and it's, it's now sending that data across. And once it's done, it's going to come back and tell me, hey, these, these sales VMs are, are ready to go. They're protected again. However, they are still running in Dallas. And so while that runs, we'll, we'll go over to another piece here. Um, let's go to one of our other protection groups. Let's go look at, um, let's go look at accounting. So accounting, we said we're protecting web and database. So let's look at the recovery plan for accounting. One of the things that I wanted to highlight is your, go back to our options. So remember I say we could have different priority groups. We, we could also have different status. I could say, look, I want, you to, I want you to fail these guys over, but don't power them on when we get over there. Also, we can look at these options in here called configure recovery. These are what we covered before. I didn't go here. So IP customization. Um, for a lot of customers that don't have that stretched layer two, um, they have to have to basically, we need another IP address on, on our Dallas site or our secondary data center. We're gonna have to use a completely different IP address. And here's where SRM gives us that ability to go specify what the IP address is gonna be. So here you see it, it sees that I've only got one NIC connected. And if I expand this here, the protected site is Houston. I can configure what it looks like on the Houston side. It's basically, and that's for my reprotect. When I choose to, when, excuse me, when I do my fail back, I can have it having a whole nother, a third IP address if I want it. But here right now, what I'm gonna do is identify what, what the IP address is. So I can go here and I can say use DHCP, or I can say, here's just get what the following, what the IP address is. Below you see this retrieve, and this, it says go pull the current IP address off the VM, which I did. And when I hit that, it populated for me. Here's your current IP address. So now for the recovery site, I can say, you know what, here's what, I, what IP address I want you to use. All right. All 
right? So accounting database of one, we're gonna ex we expect this VM to be a dot 200 when it gets failed over. All right, and so let's go ahead and fail over the accounting. We're gonna say disaster recovery, just go for it. And real quick here, so if I go back to my replications, we're gonna go back and check on marketing. So now everybody's synced up again, right? So we, that means we, we still have, we still have, um, was it marketing we failed over? Forgive me, or is it sales actually, I apologize. Yeah, it was sales that we failed over and you see the source is Dallas and it's being sent, the data is being sent over to, to Houston. But we, since our disaster has passed, we want sales to run back at production data center again. So to do that, we have to fail it over again. So in, for this step, we have to fail it over one more time. Now we're gonna fail from Dallas back to Houston. So if I go look, sales right now is going to go through a process of we're going to get power down sales here, and we're going to expect sales to get power back on up here. And I also failed over. Okay, and so accounting database, we expected that to be to, I didn't pick up the IP address just yet, but it's still going, so we'll give it a minute. So these accounting guys have now failed over. We've got accounting running in production over in, in Dallas, and shortly we should expect that IP address to pop into a 3.200, I believe. And the steps, one of the, it, you, if you notice, it just powered, accounting DB just powered off. And that's also something you need to calculate into, into your process of re-IPing. Um, when it does the re, when you select a new IP address, when you fail over, it's gonna power the VM up, get it up and running, and then once it's up and running, it's gonna power down again so that it can bring it back up on the new IP address. Um, so that's, that's basically double your time of failover. One thing we also have is called the DR IP customizer. Um, this is basically if you say I have 200 VMs and I don't want to go through adding in that IP address for every single one of them. It's basically a, uh, it's a, a script that we can run on the uh, SRM server that will that will create a spreadsheet for us and the spreadsheet will just have some some categories nick one ip address subnet mass dns server and you can go through and basically just use excel to populate all of these vms and then run that same command back on that srm server and it will import all of those ip addresses for you so that when you do the failover you will have these populated and, and as you can see here we did get our, our specified IP address for the accounting database. So I think we're out of time here, so we'll, we'll stop it there, but were there any questions, anything we could touch on real quick?